come see everyone. Um, hello. Uh, sorry I can't be there with all of you today. I'm actually doing what I love most, which is teaching. <laughs> so I'm appearing via video. Uh, I am looking at what it means to indigenize and decolonize the field of women and gender studies. And I'm hoping to develop through that process, not only an understanding of what that might look like within the field of women and gender studies, but more specifically, what that would mean in terms of a class and curriculum and all of the little pieces that come into play. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually consulting uh, with community and I'm about to begin that process. I'm super excited um, to just get this piece going. And I'm going to be meeting first with uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous community members from Brock. So staff, students, faculty, um, to hear what they would want to know from a course like this. Um, and the course will be uh, Indigenous perspectives on sex, gender, and sexuality. And so I'm doing those and doing um, focus groups and interviews. And then I'm also going to do community consultations coming up in the next year. So working particularly, I'm hoping to go through the uh, Friendship Centers because that's a great way to get into the community and reach out to people. Um, we may end up having people come to Brock, though, um, just to facilitate things. Who knows yet? It's all in the works. And so my project is doing those two goals. One is to look at what decolonizing and indigenizing women and gender studies looks like, but also developing Brock's first Indigenous-centered, community-developed course in the field of women and gender studies. And I thought it was really important because uh, decolonization is one of the pillars, the strategic pillars of Brock. And this was a really, uh, I thought this was a great opportunity to be able to offer something that was tangible, not just um, a discourse around it, mm -hmm. but actually try to produce something and to show and provide a model, I guess, for future um, professors or instructors about how you go about doing something like this in an Indigenous way of knowing and doing. Um, the most central one was around Indigenous ways of knowing and doing and what it means to conduct research with Indigenous communities. And I um, was working uh, as this project, as I got uh, the award and you know, was like, what am I going to do? I was also working on another project at the time where we were using surveys. I was so excited by the survey data and what we were getting back. And I was like, I'm going to do this for my project. That's the way I can reach the most people. And I ended up getting a lot of pushback, um, either from research ethic boards, um, including community ones, but also from people I was talking to about the project who reminded me that a survey isn't really one of our indigenous ways of knowing and doing and that if I you know I had to remember that our practice is about discussion and about coming together and meeting people face to face and so it was a, an important reminder to me that you know even when you are the expert and you think you know the best strategies for doing research that there is you know sometimes you make mistakes and that's okay and I really appreciated the people who pushed back and said you know Robin we're not sure the survey is the best strategy and we want you to think about you know indigenous ways of knowing and doing and so it just meant that I you know I had all this survey and I was excited about that and then I had to just redesign my plan and that was um, you know that's really what research is and especially with community you're gonna have pushback from community or feedback because it's not always pushback it's not like people are saying no we don't want you to do this they are just um, reminding you of what those ways of knowing and doing are and so it was a really good reminder for me that you know sometimes uh, as an academic or an expert you get this belief that you know you know what's best and that's not always true and it was a good lesson and now I'm revisiting you know doing focus groups and doing interviews with people so that we do have that face-to-face -face contact that is much more um, appreciated within Indigenous research. I think for me one of the most exciting pieces has been um, providing students with opportunities. So I've been able, um, I will have a graduate uh, student who will be working with me in the next year on this project and this student is an Indigenous student so I get to mentor a student who is really interested in similar topics and is going to get an experiential, an immersive experiential experience in Indigenous research methodologies with this project and I think that's really exciting. Um, we need more um, trained Indigenous folks in academia. And so to be able to provide this opportunity for her is actually, I think, the highlight of the project for me, and that we get to work closely and that she gets um, an education, a hands-on education that she wouldn't get in, our, in the programs that are here because we don't have um, Indigenous research methodologies as a course. And so she's gonna get to have a very graduate level experience hands-on doing this kind of research. And I'm, I think that's 
the best development out of mm -hmm. all of this is that opportunity to help um, support a young emerging scholar. Uh, right now we are in the first phase, which is consultation with Brock community, and that is Brock, Brock staff, faculty, and students. Uh, we are including Indigenous, it, um, because primarily we need the perspectives of Indigenous folks, but we are also um, interested in getting the perspectives of non-Indigenous people as well, because ultimately we want a course that is going to meet the needs of everybody involved. And while I'm really interested in making sure that it's really accessible um, and inclusive for Indigenous folks, I also want to make sure that uh, non-Indigenous students will benefit from the information shared. Ideally, my goal is to hopefully do that through the Friendship Centers, because they are the perfect natural site within the community where we can bring community together they feel safe they feel welcome there if that isn't the case then we're going to end up doing an event at Brock where we'll be centralized here and bring everybody here for that event so uh, indigenous research um, really requires community involvement um, we are taught from infancy that community is a central part of who we are in our existence and no, nobody does anything in isolation and that we have to be considerate of each other and think about each other and so when you're doing indigenous research and really grounded rooted indigenous research in traditional indigenous ways of knowing and doing that is about community and it's about taking time and making sure that you consult with people and not just you know asking their opinion quickly and moving on. This is a continual process. And it's really central to what makes Indigenous research methodologies different um, than a lot of Western ones, is that we engage in constant consultation with community. And community, I mean, this is a course, if we are gonna be decolonial, then we have to privilege Indigenous ways of knowing and doing. And if we wanna do that in a respectful way, we have to consult with the community, many of whom are the knowledge keepers for this kind of information around perspectives on sex, gender, and sexuality. So we need to take that time and we need to be responsible to that community. Um, and we have to do a thorough process of community engagement. Um, and that's a regular ongoing process. In fact, um, it should be for the duration of the entire project and well beyond that. I think it should always, um, and I think that's good research really, is that when you have community in, engaged and involved and you're constantly reviewing your work, it makes it stronger and more responsive. I also think, I mean, if we're going to talk about decolonizing curriculum and pedagogy, then we have to recognize um, that this university, Brock, is situated within a particular community, and it is the Niagara region, and that the knowledge that is most central to this is related to Haudenosaunee, Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people. And I'm neither of those. I'm Cree. Uh, I'm married into Haudenosaunee community, but I think it's really important that that knowledge, the knowledge of the Haudenosaunee people and the Anishinaabe people also find space within this course. Uh, it'll certainly be driven by a Cree perspective because that's my traditions and my background and my teachings. But I also wanted to make sure that this course was responsive to the community and the interest here in particular around Haudenosaunee people and Anishinaabe people. And so that was really important as well in terms of community engagement and making sure that um, this course met their needs as well.